thank you. So first, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to this uh, great workshop. And this talk will be about a statistical model called the multi-armed bandit model, in which an agent interacts with a set of probability distribution called arm by uh, sequentially sampling from uh, them. This model is often used within a reinforcement learning framework in the sense as uh, the sample collected are viewed as rewards uh, that the agent wants to maximize, or equivalently we say that you want to minimize a quantity called regrets. And while this regret minimization problem is a uh, can be considered as solved because of some uh, lower bound and algorithm matching this uh, lower bound. I will talk today about a much less understood problem, that of best arm in notification, in which the goal is to identify as quickly and accurately as possible the arm with highest mean uh, within the model. And in this joint work with Aurélien Garivier, we present a new lower bounds for these problems together with an algorithm that asymptotically matches our lower bound and that is also very efficient uh, in practice. So first I will start by reminding you or by explaining you what the multi-armed bandit model is. So it is simply a collection of k probability distributions that we uh, called arm and then uh, uh, an agent sequentially uh, interact with this arm by choosing at time t an arm uh, 80 that he wants to draw, and then he observes a sample from the associated probability uh, distribution. So of course, his sampling strategy is going to be sequential in the sense that the arm chosen at time t plus 1 must depend only uh, in some arbitrary way of the past chosen arm, a1 up to 80, and the uh, past observed sample, x1 up to xt. And th the way he samples the arm will be uh, directed toward uh, a goal related to learning which arms are the best in the model. And our criterion for best will be uh, the arm with highest mean. Especially we want to uh, identify the arm A star that maximizes the mean. And we will denote by uh, mu star the mean of uh, this arm. And this learning process can have several constraints. And actually the first constraint that has been considered in the literature is the one called regret minimization, in which the sample collected are viewed as some uh, rewards, and in which the goal is to adjust the sampling strategy so that uh, one maximizes the expected sum of the rewards accumulated during the, the interaction. So this is equivalent to minimize uh, the quantity that I define here as the regret, which is the expected difference between so the accumulated rewards one could obtain if we played always the arm mu star, that we of course don't know uh, during the, uh, the real situation, uh, minus the sum of uh, accumulated reward obtained with our actual uh, strategy. So minimizing the regret forces to uh, realize a trade-off between uh, exploring the environment, trying a little bit all the arm to get an estimate of the mean payoff, and uh, trying to uh, play the arms that have been best so far because we have this constraint of uh, maximizing the rewards while we learn. So originally, this model arose from a simple modeling of a clinical trial. So this dates back to the 1930s with the work of, uh, of Thompson. And uh, for example, we, can have a, we have a bunch of medical treatments. So each is associated with a Bernoulli random variable that models the variability of the treatment across uh, patients. And that gives one if the treatment was successful or zero if the patient dies. And the goal, of course, would be in a medical trial to maximize the number of uh, patients still alive at the end of, uh, of the trial. But actually, if you, so this would be a, a rephrasing of uh, maximizing the expected sum of, of reward. But if you discuss with people running real clinical trial this day, actually in the early stages they are not really concerned with curing patients while they learn the efficiency of the treatment and they would be more interested by an alternative objective that is learn uh, quickly which treatment is the best among the pool of candidate treatment because later in the next phases this treatment will be given to a much larger size of, um, of patients. So they would be more interested by this uh, best arm identification problem that I introduced 
here a little bit more mathematically. So the goal is to identify quickly uh, the arm uh, A star, so the arm with the highest mean, but this time without the incentive to draw uh, arms that have high mean. So we are only looking for a strategy that optimally explores uh, the, the environment. So the strategy, uh, so the, an important part in the strategy will still be the way that we choose the arms that we want to draw at the current stage based on the, the previous uh, history. But we will also need uh, some, uh, stop some uh, random stopping time uh, telling us when we can stop the experiment, so when we are convinced that we can uh, identify the best arm, after which we make a guess. So this is our recommendation rule. So a guess uh, A hat for this arm uh, A star. And so several goals have been considered in the literature, so I give two here. So either we can uh, fix uh, a budget, so we know that we can only sample uh, capital T times uh, the arms, and then we want to make a, re a recommendation that is as accurate as possible, so that minimizes the probability that we make a mistake. Or we, are, we fix some risk parameter delta, and we want to guarantee that the recommendation we make is wrong with probability at most delta, and to reach this recommendation, uh, we, want, we want to need as few, uh, as few samples from the arm as possible, so minimize what we call here the, the sample complexity. So this framework is, uh, can, be a, can model a clinical trial, as I said, but would be maybe more re relevant for some uh, market search uh, uh, application in which, for example, a company has to decide uh, which product uh, it wants to commercialize and he, he, he allows so he wants to identify the best product with high probability and he is okay, the company is okay to lose a little bit of money during the, the learning in order then to make uh, much, more, uh, much more money. So in this talk we will focus on the uh, fixed confidence uh, setting and more precisely given a class of uh, bandit uh, models, so a set F of, of possible uh, bandit model, for example, uh, all the ARM are some uh, Bernoulli distributions, we want to build uh, strategies that are delta back on this class. That is, we can guarantee that for any bandit model in this class, it will uh, output the correct, the best ARM with probability larger than uh, 1 minus delta. And we uh, among delta pack strategies, we want to minimize the sample complexity, and in this talk I want to tell you what is the minimal uh, expected number of samples that we need to, uh, for a, a delta pal algorithm, and the answer will consist in first a lower bound on uh, this uh, sample complexity, and then in uh, exhibiting a, a delta pack strategy for which uh, the expected sample complexity matches uh, our lower bound. So here uh, it will be a distribution dependent uh, lower bound, so depending on the, the class of function uh, of bandit models that we consider. And uh, we solve this problem for a particular type of uh, one parameter uh, bandit model, so that we call the exponential family uh, bandit model. No, I don't think I want to install OS X L Capitan. Okay, so um, we study uh, a class of bandit model in which the distribution of all arms uh, belong to some uh, set of uh, probability distribution that are parameterized by some uh, real parameter uh, theta called the natural parameter and whose density have the following form. And so this class of uh, distribution, uh, uh, if we particularize the B function here, we can recover a lot of well-known distribution like Bernoulli distribution, Poisson distribution, Gaussian with known variant, and so forth. And a good feature of this uh, class of uh, one-parameter models is that actually the distribution nu theta can be also reparametrized by its mean because there is a one-to-one -one <coughs> mapping between the natural parameter theta uh, and the mean. And as our parameter of interest in the bandit problem is the mean, we will denote by a new sub mu the unique distribution in the class P uh, that has a mean uh, mu. And I introduce here an, impor an important notion to characterize the complexity uh, of my problem in terms of information theoretic quantity is here the Kullback-Leibler divergence between uh, 
so to parameterized by the mean of the distribution. So we introduce here d of mu mu prime as a killback Leibler divergence between the unique distribution of mean mu and the unique distribution of mean uh, of mean mu prime. So we can give a closed form for the particular example that I mentioned, and here I give it for the the Bernoulli case. And so the class of uh, bandit model that we consider will be this class S. So to ease the notation, as I'm going to consider a bandit problem of the following form, where uh, so each of uh, the arms that depend on some parameter, I will identify the, so this set of distribution with the vector of, uh, of their means. And so I will consider all the bandit problem for which there exists one arm that is strictly larger, whose mean is strictly larger than the other. So the set of uh, all bandit models that have a, a unique uh, optimal R. Okay, so before uh, presenting the lower bound and the matching algorithm, I'm going to review quickly uh, why I said in the introduction that the regret minimization objective uh, is solved, and we will uh, find some inspiration about what we want to prove for the best term identification uh, problem. So uh, regret minimization uh, can be uh, well, an, imp an important uh, result that dates back to the 1980s uh, is a lower bound that has been given by uh, Lyon Robbins on the, on the regret, and that follows from the, this uh, rewriting of the regret as a function of uh, the number of time each uh, arm has been drawn up to time t. So more precisely, the regret is the sum over the arm of, so here we have the the suboptimality gap, so the gap between the mean of the best arm and the mean of arm A, multiplied by the expected number of uh, times that arm A has been drawn up to, up to time t. And so to have an algorithm with low regret, we need an algorithm for which uh, the expected number of draws of any suboptimal arm is small. And so the lower bound of Fly and Robbins give us a limit on the number of times we we draw the suboptimal arm and tells us that we need to draw them infinitely many and more specifically that the expected number of draws of a suboptimal arm A up to time t is asymptotically lower bounded by log t divided by d of mu a mu star. So here is a kullback leibler divergence between the distribution of mean mu a and the distribution of mean mu star appears. And of course we understand that the smaller these uh, quantities, uh, the larger the, the arm has to be drawn because we, we have troubles to discriminate between this arm and uh, the optimal arm. And so this lower bounds permits to define a notion of asymptotic optimality as an algorithm that matches this lower bound, so for which the expected number of draws of any suboptimal arm A is asymptotically upper bounded by log t divided by the right information theoretic quantity. So quickly I show you that there exists such an asymptotically optimal algorithm that is based on the so-called UCB principle. So it is a very simple algorithm that computes one index per arm and chooses the arms with highest index. And the index will be some upper confidence bound on the mean, uh, the mean of this arm. And actually, in order to get, so uh, several UCB types of algorithm have been proposed, but in order to get the asymptotic optimality property, one has to be careful in the way we build the confidence interval. And here you see we have a non-explicit uh, upper confidence bound that is uh, computed using the function d uh, itself, so the kullback leibler divergence in the exponential families that we consider. And so these types of confidence interval follow by uh, applying a Chernoff uh, method and rely on some specific property of the exponential family. But just practically to compute the index, we just need to uh, uh, have so the function d of uh, the empirical mean x as a function of x, and then threshold at some level log t divided by the number of draws, and this gives us uh, uh, our uh, so-called KL uh, UCB uh, index. And so this KL UCB algorithm uh, has been shown to be uh, asymptotic optimal through a finite time analysis. So we, we upper bound, so uh, it was upper bounded in this paper, 
the expected number of draw of the suboptimal arm A is upper bounded by log t divided by d mu a mu star plus some uh, second order term that is uh, smaller than, uh, than log t. So this proved the following. We showed that so the infimum over all consistent algorithm of the limit of uh, the regret divided by log t is exactly equal to the sum over the arm of so the gap between the mean of the best arm and the mean of arm A divided by the Kullback Leibler divergence between mu A and uh, mu star. So this, uh, this result dates back to 1985 because additionally to the lower bound, Lyon Robbins actually proposed an asymptotic algorithm, asymptotically optimal algorithm. However, the algorithm was not really uh, explicit or practical, and so uh, more, more efficient algorithms were proposed uh, uh, afterwards uh, until uh, some uh, algorithms like KL UCB that are uh, simple to implement and also uh, asymptotically optimal. So for the best arm identification uh, problem that we are looking at today, I'm going to try to provide uh, the first two steps. And also we will see that the algorithm will still be uh, efficient to implement in practice. So I quickly remind you about the best time identification problem. So whenever I will work with some bandit mod model parameterized by mu, I will assume for simplicity that the arm are ordered in a decreasing way and there is a gap between mu1 and, uh, and mu2. And as I told you, the algorithm is made of three things, the sampling rule, the stopping rule, and the, the recommendation rule. And we have to guarantee that for any uh, bandit model mu, the probability that uh, the recommendation rule outputs the optimal arm is larger than y minus delta. And we want to have a small sample complexity, so a small expected number of a draw of uh, this arm. So in the literature, we can find uh, a lot of delta pack algorithm for which uh, bounds on the sample complexity are given. So either in expectation or with high probability, but the existing bounds uh, scale like this. So uh, the order of, the, of magnitude of the sample complexity is a log one over delta, where delta is our risk parameter, multiplied by a quantity that depends on the, on the bandit model and that takes the form of uh, a sum over the arm of, so the d here we have the sum over all the suboptimal arm of the square distance between the best arm and this arm. And here we have the distance between the optimal arm and the, uh, and the second best arm. So this looks like some, uh, so the square gap between the means in the Bernoulli case at least look like a sub-Gaussian approximation of this uh, d function, of the, the kullback leibler divergence. So somehow with this quantity, the information theoretic terms are not yet identified. And plus here in the big O, there are a lot of uh, sometimes even non-explicit constant that are hiding. And so my goal is really to have a lower bound and upper bound that match up to constant and involve some information theoretic terms. So in this sense, we can say that the optimal Sample complexity is not yet uh, identified. So let's try to have some uh, new lower bounds for, for this problem. So I will first introduce you some uh, useful tools to derive lower bound, and uh, we will derive together uh, uh, a lower bound for, for this problem. So lower bounds for either regret minimization of, uh, uh, or best time notification relies on uh, so-called change of measure arguments so the idea is that if we want to uh, lower bound the number of samples needed under some specific uh, bandit model uh, mu, uh, we will need to find another bandit instance lambda under which the behavior uh, of the algorithm must be di uh, quite different and under which the, all the arm needs to be, uh, to be drawn a, a little bit. And so change of distribution can be uh, quite technical, but here I propose a, a useful lemma that we derived with uh, Olivier Capé and uh, Aurélien uh, Garivier that relates in a quite explicit way the risk parameter delta to the expected number of draw of, uh, of the arms through the Kullback-Leibler divergence uh, of, uh, 
uh, an arm A under a model mu or under a model lambda. And this inequality holds for every bandit model lambda that <coughs> has a different optimal arm compared to the, to the original uh, bandit model mu. So the results tell us that the sum over the arm of this expected number of draw multiplied by the information term is lower bounded by, so this quantity is the binary relative entropy between delta and one minus delta that is roughly of order log one over delta. So this is a log one over delta that we saw in the state of the art uh, bounds. So I'm going to explain you how to use this, uh, this result to derive lower bound. So we will first try to, uh, so as we need a lower bound on the number of samples needed, the first idea would be to separately lower bound the number of times each arm should be drawn. And for example, we fix here uh, an arm A that belongs to 2K, so a suboptimal arm A, and we want to lower bound the expected number of times this arm has been drawn. So the idea here is that if we choose a, b a bandit model lambda in which uh, uh, only few of these terms are non-zero, we will directly have a lower bound on the expected number of draw of A. And so what we choose here is a bandit model lambda in which, so for all i difference of A, uh, lambda i is equal to mu i, so the corresponding information term is zero. And for arm A, we move uh, the mean mu a slightly about the mean of the optimal arm. So we set it to mu 1 plus epsilon. So under this bandit model lambda, the optimal arm is now arm a, whereas in the first, uh, the original uh, bandit model, the optimal arm was arm 1. So this condition is uh, satisfied. And then if we write this inequality for this particular choice of lambda, we get that the expected number of draws of a multiplied by a d of mu a mu, a, mu 1 plus epsilon is lower bounded by uh, uh, kl delta 1 minus delta, which gives us the following lower bound on the expected number of draws of arm a uh, that we, when we take uh, epsilon uh, that goes to, to zero. So what we show with this argument is the following lower bounds. So we have to repeat the argument for all suboptimal arm and then do also something for the, for the optimal arm. So we have that for any delta pack algorithm, the sample complexity is lower bounded by, so this is roughly log one over delta, as seen by this inequality, multiplied by these complexity terms. And so here we have something like looks like an equivalent of the line Robbins lower bound, because here we would have, so, uh, the distance between uh, mu a and the optimal arm, and here the distance between the optimal arm and, uh, and arm two. So uh, for sometimes I believe that this was the right uh, lower bound and that uh, we could find an algorithm uh, matching it. But it turns out that this lower bound is not tight enough and actually uh, we can uh, derive uh, an optimal lower bound and actually it will be a three line proof. So the idea is, if we start with the, the very same uh, lemma, so the very s uh, same change of distribution, actually in the previous proof, we chose uh, specific values of uh, lambda and uh, wrote the, the statement for this value. But we can, in principle, as this old for every, uh, every bandit model that has a different uh, optimal arm, we can simply define the set uh, alt of mu as all the bandit model lambda uh, that have a different optimal arm. And then it holds that the infimum uh, over lambda in this uh, set of bandit model of, uh, so this sum is uh, smaller than uh, uh, log one over delta, say. And so as we want to lower bound the sample complexity, we just artificially introduced it. So we multiply and divide by the expectation of, uh, of tau. And so at this stage, we are not completely happy because this quantity depends on the algorithm through the expected number of draws of the arm. And so the idea is just to simply upper bound it by something that does not depend on the algorithm. And if we note that this quantity uh, sums to one, so they form a probability vector, 
we can upper bound this by the supremum over all W in uh, the simplex of size k, so the vector that sums to, to 1 of uh, this quantity. And so we have proof uh, in uh, three lines uh, the very simple yet non-explicit uh, lower bound on the, simplexity, on the sample complexity, so telling that the sample complexity is lower bounded by uh, T star of mu, so some characteristic uh, number of samples of the problem multiplied by log 1 over delta, where so T star has this uh, non-explicit form. And this actually reminds us from some uh, non-explicit lower bounds that do exist in the bandit uh, literature. So the first one given by Graz and Lai in 1997 uh, was a lower bound on the regret, but for very complex model with possible correlation between arms. So it was somehow natural to have something less explicit than the Lai and Robin's lower bound. While the second result is a recent paper uh, from last year that studies the best arm in notification problem, but for a different class of bandit model. So uh, whereas we studied all the bandit model with a single optimal arm, they were uh, concerned with bandit model in which only one arm is different from the other. So you have one optimal arm on a set of arms that all have the same values. And so for this specific class S that is different from ours, they also derived some uh, non-explicit uh, lower bound. So in going back to our setting, what is actually very interesting with this bound is that we understood from the proof that uh, this WA were a substitute for uh, uh, the proportion of draw. So there was a ratio of the expected number of draw of A divided by the expected uh, total number of samples. So they can be viewed as the uh, proportion of draws of arm A under some optimal strategy. So if we take uh, uh, W star of mu that realizes the argmax here. So we expect this to contain the uh, optimal proportion of draws of the arm. So at this stage, you could ask me uh, a question. So can I really define this? I mean, I never told you that this uh, argmax uh, is unique. And so what I need to justify uh, this definition is to uh, show you that this is uh, unique and so well defined. And actually, as a byproduct, we will come up with some efficient algorithm to compute this, uh, this non-explicit uh, value. So we can start by being a little bit less ambitious and just fixing some uh, W star in this argmax. And actually, uh, because we are working with this uh, exponential family uh, bandit model, uh, we, can, uh, we can try to give a, a bit more uh, explicit formulation of uh, the second optimization problem here in, uh, in Lambda. And actually, an explicit uh, calculation yield that this is equal to uh, the minimum for all uh, suboptimal arm uh, A, so A different uh, of 1, of uh, this quantity, which is a weighted sum of uh, kullback leibler uh, divergence. And uh, actually, if, uh, you if we factor W1 uh, in this expression, we can see that uh, this is no simply a function of the ratio between uh, WA and W1 through a function uh, GA that we defined uh, here. And uh, a little bit of uh, derivation show you that this function GA uh, is a one-to-one -one mapping between R plus and uh, some interval uh, zero uh, d mu one uh, mu a that will be uh, useful in the in the sequel and so to rephrase this a little bit more uh, more explicitly we are going to introduce uh, uh, the following notation so we will work with uh, x star so the ratio between uh, uh, w a star and uh, w y star and so with this notation using that uh, uh, the sum of uh, w a equals one uh, we have that W1 will be a 1 divided by the sum of the xA. And so finally, we are, if we want to find uh, the x star first, we are looking at uh, uh, x2 and xk star within this, uh, this argmax. And so the next step is to realize that as here we have a minimum over uh, k minus 1 uh, function, it is easy to check that at the optimum, 
all these k minus one function have to take the, the same values. And so there exists some uh, real value uh, that I denote by y star, uh, for which uh, xa of uh, x at the optimum is equal to, to this value. And so finally, the, the optimization problem that we are solving uh, can completely be reduced to a one-dimensional uh, optimization uh, problem. So we just need, uh, so defining uh, x, uh, xa as the inverse function of, uh, so the previously uh, introduced function here, uh, we have to find a y star uh, uh, that maximizes this function over the interval uh, 0, uh, d mu 1, uh, mu 2. And actually, uh, it is possible to compute the derivative of the function. And solving the equation, the derivative equals zero, we can prove that. Uh, so, we can prove that uh, there is a unique point realizing the argmax, which shows us that there is a unique uh, optimal weight uh, w uh, star. And so, uh, we <coughs> more precisely, we have the the following uh, theorem in the paper, so that characterize the value of uh, W star of mu in terms of this uh, this function x a that I introduced, and uh, so showing that the computation of y, y star uh, reduced to solving a real uh, equation. So f f of y will be some uh, increasing function. So we can just solve this by uh, I don't know dichotomic search, and then the evaluation of the function will be also. Uh, reduced to solving uh, k minus ma one uh, smooth equation. So in the end, we have an efficient way to compute these uh, important vectors uh, uh, w star of, uh, of mu. And so the idea of the algorithm that we propose to attain the, the lower bound will be to try to match this, uh, this proportion. And indeed, that is what our uh, tracking uh, sampling rule is, uh, is doing. So uh, the idea is that so at a given stage of our algorithm, we have formed the vector uh, mu hat of the empirical mean of uh, all the arms, so based on the, draw, the draws that we have uh, so far. And so the tracking sampling rule first check whether there is an arm that have been drawn less than square root of t times at time t. If this is the case, then we are going to draw such arm. So this is called the forced exploration phase. And uh, if uh, all the arm have been drawn more than uh, root t uh, times, we are going to choose the arm that maximizes t of uh, w a star of or empirical uh, of vector of empirical means minus uh, n a t. And so this uh, sampling rule is built in order that uh, risk probability one, uh, the fraction of draws of the arm A converges to uh, the target uh, optimal value W star A of mu. And so we can see here that uh, the algorithm requires to compute the vector W star for our current uh, empirical mean. So at each step of the, the algorithm, we are going to solve the previously described optimization problem in order to compute uh, the weights. And so now we have to, so an, a key uh, feature actually of the best time notification problem is the, the stopping rule. So we, we should stop uh, as soon as possible in order to have a, a low sample complexity. So the idea is, so the stopping rules that we proposed can simply be uh, motivated by some uh, uh, statistical testing problem. So uh, if we introduce here uh, z a b t as some uh, log likelihood ratio, so more precisely here we have the maximum likelihood under the constraint that uh, the mean of arm a is larger than the mean of arm b, and here we have the maximum likelihood under the opposite constraint, and it is easy to understand that high value of these statistics tend to reject the hypothesis that uh, mu a is smaller than uh, mu b. And so uh, we will stop when there is one arm that can be shown to be significantly larger than all the other in the sense of this uh, generalized likelihood ratio, uh, uh, ratio test. So our stopping time at t uh, that I index by 
uh, delta because of course uh, the moment we stop depends on the risk parameter delta that uh, we given can be uh, rephrased in the following way. So we stop when there exists A such that for all B, for all other arms, uh, the statistic uh, ZABT is larger than from threshold uh, beta uh, T delta. And actually, this uh, stopping rule can be traced back to uh, some old work by Chernoff in 1959, uh, uh, who was working on uh, sequential adaptive uh, hypothesis testing, but he was concerned with uh, finite hypothesis, whereas here our hypotheses are uh, continuous because we, we want to check whether mu A is larger than all the, the, the other arms. But uh, he uh, this paper gave us a lot of intuition on how to devise a, a good, uh, good strategies. Uh, okay, so of course, again, in, uh, under our exponential family uh, assumption, we can give an explicit formulation for this uh, uh, generalized likelihood uh, statistic, showing uh, especially that if uh, mu at a, so the empirical mean of our arm A is larger than the empirical mean of arm B, we have the following expression, that feature here, so this quantity is important, so it is the uh, weighted sum of, uh, of empirical mean. So uh, a bit like in the lower bound, we have here uh, a weighted sum of, uh, of uh, information theoretic uh, terms. And so I, I, defi I defined this uh, stopping rule with this uh, generalized likelihood uh, ratio test uh, ideas, but actually there are several possible interpretations one of which uh, is related to the lower bound that we give. And uh, so the stopping statistic can actually be shown to be equal to T multiplied by the infimum for lambda that belongs to uh, so alt of uh, mu hat T, so all the bandit model in which the optimal arm is different uh, from our current uh, guess of uh, the sum of this uh, quantity. And so we understand that if we use uh, a sampling strategy uh, such that here these uh, fraction of draws of arm A converge to a W star, the solution of our optimization problem, here we will, more, we will recover our uh, complexity term uh, T star of, uh, of mu. And so if we have a good sampling rule and we believe this is true, uh, then we should stop when uh, this quantity exceeds log 1 over delta because we would exactly recover the sample complexity of uh, uh, T star of mu multiplied by uh, log 1 over delta. But we will see that we, we shall need a slightly larger um, threshold for stopping. And I will uh, give you here some, uh, some pointers on uh, how to choose the, uh, the sampling rule. So before sa that, maybe another interesting uh, interpretation for the stopping rule is in terms of uh, uh, information theory, in terms of the minimum number of bits you need to code the sequence of uh, 0 and 1 produced by arm A and arm B. So uh, again, uh, uh, our generalized likelihood uh, statistic can be rewritten uh, using the Shannon entropy of the, the distribution. Uh, in the following form, where here actually uh, we have the number of times we've drawn uh, A and B multiplied by uh, so the Shannon entropy of uh, mu A, B, T. So this represents the average number of bits we would need to code all the, si all the samples produced by both arms. And here we have uh, the number of bits needed if we separately code the samples obtained from A and the samples obtained from, uh, from B. So another interpretation is that we stop when this quantity is significantly larger than this one, meaning that it is really more costly to encode A and B together and so that A and B should really be, uh, be far apart. So this is another interpretation and I think I won't have uh, time to go into uh, into details of the proof, but this, uh, there will be some uh, useful uh, information theoretic uh, uh, 
uh, arguments. And so what we prove is that if we choose, as I, to as I told you, a threshold slightly larger than log 1 over delta, so more precisely log uh, of uh, something multiplied by t divided by delta, then we have a delta pack uh, algorithm. And uh, this, this choice comes from the, the following uh, result that we prove, uh, telling that if we have uh, the mean of arm A that is smaller than the mean of arm B, then for any sampling rule, the probability that there exists T such that uh, Z, A, B, T exceed uh, log 2T divided by L delta is, uh, is smaller than, uh, than delta. <coughs> so I, I'm not sure I have, uh, I have time for this, but I will just try to... So the way we prove... So usually to prove this kind of thing, we use some uh, concentration inequality. And here uh, I also use some change of uh, measure uh, idea. And um, so to prove this, uh, if we introduce a TAB as the first time at which uh, this, this statistic exceeds the threshold uh, uh, log 2t divided by delta, then all we have to prove is that the probability that uh, TAB is finite is smaller than, uh, than delta. And to do so, we are just using the definition of uh, ZABT as a likelihood uh, ratio uh, statistic. So the event uh, TAB equal T uh, um, uh, means that uh, this likelihood uh, ratio exceeds uh, 2 uh, T divided by delta. And then uh, the probability that uh, TAB uh, is finite will be the sum for uh, all Ts of the expectation of the indicator of that event. And then the idea is just to upper bound 1 by uh, this divided, multiplied by delta divided by 2t, so a bit like the trick you use to prove uh, Markov inequality. And so you're, you're left with, uh, with this quantity. Uh, and then using that mu a is smaller than uh, mu b, here you can lower bound the denominator by uh, uh, the value of this for the particular instance uh, mu a, uh, mu b that we, uh, we consider. So we have the, the following uh, equality. And then what, is what will be uh, useful is that when we express here the, the integral, so I do it here in the Bernoulli case, so there will be a sum over all the possible uh, uh, observed, uh, observed uh, reward up to, up to time t. Uh, this is going to cancel out with the, the likelihood uh, term. And here we would be very happy if we had here uh, a probability density, which is not the case because of the maximum here. And then, so the information theoretic idea that we use uh, in the proof is uh, an existing uh, uniform bound over the, the likelihood of, uh, of a Bernoulli uh, random variable in terms of this quantity called uh, kt of x. Uh, so it consists, it, it is a partially integrated likelihood. Here <coughs> PU of X is the likelihood of uh, the sequence of observation we have under Bernoulli of mean uh, U. And then we integrate U under uh, some, uh, some probability distribution here. <coughs> and so uh, upper bounding uh, this quantity uh, here, this uh, P mu A uh, of uh, the sample uh, gathered from arm A by, by this quantity, uh, give us something that uh, is a probability distribution over the sequence of uh, 0 and 1 uh, observed. And then the, the change of measure idea uh, comes from the fact that here we can interpret this sum as an expectation under some alternative probability uh, space of uh, the indicator of these events. And this allows us to give us an upper bound by something which is a probability and which is therefore uh, smaller than one. So this is a, a, a new idea to, to derive uh, this kind of proof compared to, uh, to, use to uh, usual uh, concentration inequalities that are, that are used uh, in, other, uh, in other works. And that could also be used but to obtain uh, less precise uh, results. Okay, so to summarize, what, uh, what algorithm did we, uh, did we exhibit and what 
uh, guarantees uh, did we prove. So the algorithm, I call it the track and stop strategy. So it uses the, trapping, the tracking sampling rule uh, that I presented, so the idea to match this uh, vector W star of uh, optimal, uh, uh, optimal proportion of uh, draws. Uh, then we use the Chernoff stopping rule, so based on this uh, uh, generalized likelihood uh, <coughs> ratio statistics, with this, uh, this threshold and the recommendation rule when we stop, we are going to choose the arm that has the highest uh, empirical mean. And so we prove that this algorithm uh, is delta pack and uh, satisfy that the limit when uh, delta uh, goes to zero of the expected number of samples needed divided by log one over delta uh, is equal to uh, T star of mu, which was our, uh, uh, the characteristic time that appeared in, uh, in our lower bound. <coughs> so it is pretty easy to prove uh, uh, this equality uh, uh, almost surely. So the technical part is to handle the, the expectation. And uh, so I, wi I will skip the proof, but uh, it's, it takes one slide. So if one day you want to look in the paper, it's also, uh, it's also very short. So I, I want to uh, spend a few minutes on the practical uh, implication of this, uh, this work. So how does our uh, track and stop strategy compares to the state of the art uh, algorithm for this problem? So in order to do so, I have to quickly uh, introduce a few algorithms that can be used uh, for these problems. And usually they are of two kinds. Uh, either they are using uh, upper and lower confidence bound. So they are counterparts of uh, UCB types of algorithm for the best arm notification problem. Or they are using some uh, elimination principle. So you start with all the arm and then you successfully uh, eliminate the arm for which you're convinced that they are not the optimal arm. So the first algorithm I present is of the first kind. It's called the KL-LUCB. So it is a bit reminiscent of the KL-UCB algorithm, except that uh, it's going, it is going to use an upper confidence bound, so based on this uh, D function again, and, uh, and also a lower confidence bound. And here, whereas in uh, KL-UCB we had a log T, here we have something that depends on uh, T and delta, and which is the equivalent of the, the, the threshold we've seen before. So the algorithm uh, samples actually two arms at each round. So it samples the uh, empirical best arm, the arm that maximizes uh, uh, mu hat uh, 80, and it also samples the arm among the suboptimal arm that has the largest upper confidence bound. So here the arm in, in bold is, uh, is sampled and it stops whenever the lower bound of the optimal arm is larger than the upper bound of, uh, of all the other suboptimal arm. So somehow when the confidence interval are separated and then of course we decide for our, uh, the, the empirical best arm. So the other algorithm that I call uh, KL racing is of the second type, so it maintains uh, a set R of uh, remaining arms, so all the arms still in the race, and uh, so it proceeds in rounds. At each round, uh, we first draw all the arms that are in the set of uh, remaining arms. Uh, we compute the empirical means, so for each arm still in the race, uh, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, drawn it uh, R times, so the empirical ba uh, mean is based on R samples. Then we can compute the empirical best arm, the one with highest uh, empirical mean uh, mu a r, and also the empirical worst arm. And if the best arm is significantly larger than the uh, worst arm, we are going to discard the, the worst arm. And our, uh, our criterion to perform the elimination is a bit uh, similar to uh, the KL LUCB algorithm is uh, based on confidence interval, and more precisely, we eliminate the worst arm if the lower confidence bound of the empirical best is larger than uh, the upper confidence bound of uh, the, the empirical worst. And then we remo re remove uh, WR from the set R. And uh, so uh, we stop when there is a single element 
in the set of remaining arms that we output at the or guess for the, the, the optimal arm, A star. Okay, so this is kind of a, a generic algorithm where you could uh, replace uh, the elimination step by some uh, other criterion. And so empirically, we also tried uh, to improve this uh, procedure by replacing the elimination step by, uh, so we stop if the uh, likelihood statistic of uh, the best, empirical best, versus empirical worst exceed uh, some uh, thresholds. And so this, uh, in a more explicit form, uh, this amounts to uh, eliminate uh, an arm when uh, uh, this, uh, this holds true for A equal uh, the empirical best and B equal the, uh, the empirical uh, worst. So we call this the Chernoff racing algorithm because it is a racing type of uh, algorithm but that uses our uh, Chernoff uh, stopping rule. So uh, I present here uh, numerical results on uh, two Bernoulli bandit models. So one with uh, four arms and the other with uh, five arms. So I, I give here the the explicit value of the arms together with the optimal proportion of draws uh, in each of these uh, two models. I also mentioned that in practice the threshold function uh, or the exploration rate in the confidence interval are all set to a log, log of log t divided by delta, whereas it was proved optimal uh, for, uh, I think here, uh, uh, two times t. So they are a bit uh, smaller than what is allowed by theory, but they are still uh, very conservative. And so uh, uh, with this choice, so we uh, implemented the track and stop strategy, uh, the two state of the algorithm, or also and also our improvements for a racing type of algorithm based on the churn of stopping rule. And what we see is that compared to uh, the state of the art, the sample complexity are uh, divided by, uh, by two, roughly. So there is a huge uh, practical improvement. So this is run for a specific value, delta equals zero, one. But of course, the trends, uh, uh, the same trends occur if uh, uh, we take smaller value of, uh, of delta. And an interesting uh, phenomenon that uh, we can highlight is that on the first bandit uh, model, Chernoff racing performed kind of similarly than uh, track and stop, whereas on the second, it performed worse than uh, KLUCB. So it is more, it is less robust to a various uh, bandit problem. And the reason for this, in, in the way we build the algorithm, a racing type of algorithm is going to have two arms that have been drawn the same number of times because we stop when we stop there are still uh, two arms that have been drawn the same number of times and somehow so if we looked at the proportion of draws we would here have two uh, equal value in uh, the empirical proportion whereas so uh, in the problem two the proportion of draws on of one and two are uh, more uh, separated than in the first problem and then it's kind of normal that a racing type of algorithm performs uh, less good in this model. So to conclude, uh, we, we proved the following for best arm identification. So we computed uh, the value of the infimum over pack algorithm of the uh, limit of the ratio of the sample complexity divided by log one over delta. So we, pr we propose a little bit more explicit formulation in the paper and more importantly, an optimal, uh, uh, sorry, a characterization of the optimal uh, proportion uh, W star that realizes the argmax here and that permits us to derive an efficient strategy uh, matching the, the bound. So there, are, there is plenty of uh, future work because here the analysis we propose is really asymptotic. So we would want a finite time analysis, just like what exists for regret minimization. And also we can imagine other ways to use this knowledge of the optimal weights. Uh, and so uh, we would want to combine it with other successful uh, heuristic in the bandit literature, like the use of uh, UCB's uh, uh, upper and lower confidence dense bounds, or the use of Thompson sampling. Thank you. <coughs> Questions or comments? So I'm wondering what you would lose if uh, so if you don't want to 
to, to find the best arm, you go back to your original problem, which was to uh, minimize your regret. Uh, one possible uh, way to, to approach this is to try and first find the best arm and then systematically uh, play that best arm. So how much would you lose um, if you were using that approach? So it would be suboptimal, I think. So this, uh, this kind of strategy actually has been proposed. It's called uh, explore then exp Actually, you, you propose to dissociate the exploration phase and the, the exploitation phase. And I think because the, um, the two, com I mean, if you were to use an optimal algorithm for best army notification in the first phase and then uh, choose always the best, uh, empirical best until the end, I think you would uh, have some, in your upper bound, in the upper bound you could devise for the algorithm, you would have uh, this uh, T star of mu appear somewhere. And I don't think that you, you would end up with the uh, complexity of the regret minimization problem, which is much more simple and, uh, and explicit. But you would use a constant factor or more than that? Uh, yeah, I think it would be a constant factor in front of the log, but it could be uh, at least uh, twice uh, the, this number. Or and actually, I tried uh, empirically uh, with, not with the optimal algorithm, but with GU heuristic. And for regret minimization, it is still better to balance exploration and exploitation uh, as we go and not to, to dissociate them. Uh, have you considered as your metric for success instead of the probability of picking the right hand, the uh, error in the mean uh, that you make? Yeah, so this is called uh, the simple regret. So the optimization error somehow, so your criterion is to uh, minimize uh, mu star minus uh, mu of the arm you get. So meaning so that, one. yeah. So I have not, so, so some work in the literature have considered this uh, measure, which is, I agree, a bit different from uh, just uh, the probability of error. But uh, for example, I don't know lower bound for the simple regret. And yeah, it would be actually in an interesting, uh, future work as well. I have a question maybe related to the last one. <coughs> if you think of a clinical trial, what if you just want to find the best treatment within, uh, within 5% compared to, the, compared to the best trial? In particular, you can include the case where you have uh, several uh, equally good uh, optimal mm. arms. Yeah, so this is a natural way as well to relax the problem. So you fix some uh, epsilon, so uh, 0.05 <coughs> says, and your goal is to output an arm whose mean is larger than mu star minus epsilon. So this is also a relaxation that have been uh, considered in the literature. And you can uh, adapt the, the algorithm to, to handle that case. But again, for the lower bound, I wouldn't be able to derive a lower bound that would feature uh, uh, that would incorporate that, uh, that epsilon uh, for the moment. But, uh, <coughs> but yes, uh, there are <coughs> algorithms with upper bounds that uh, involve uh, like uh, the, uh, the maximum between uh, epsilon and the, the minimal gap between the arm or something like that. So the idea would, for example, if you use a, a racing type of algorithm would simply be uh, well, if after uh, 1 divided by epsilon square uh, log 1 over delta, you still not stop, then you stop and output whatever arms. This would work uh, as a heuristic for this, uh, this problem. Okay, so let's uh, thank Emily again.